Good morning. Happy Thursday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Welcome. This is the obviously the Thanksgiving edition, right? I understand it's very foundational um, yeah. for evals and stuff or just movement. Yeah. Um, it's just a starting point. It's just a starting point. Just keep that in mind. It's just a starting point. Okay. Right. Um, going off that, if the goal is to get movement, um, you know, narrow to wide or wide to narrow, um, and let's say you get that change, I'm assuming. Can I stop you for a second? Can I stop you? Sorry. Don't say wide to narrow or narrow to wide because you're not going to change that. What I would say is, is does it, can you get one to move? Okay. Cause you're not trying to change somebody. For, you're not trying to change a wide to a narrow or a narrow to a wide. Okay. It won't work. okay. So I just want to just, just want to interrupt you. So, so you you change your thought process a little bit. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I'm assuming the duration, if it does change and like, and you get movement, I'm assuming the longer that change lasts, the better. And um, with that um, assumption, do you find anything particularly helpful with having a longer change? Well, it, the, the longer the, the change, obviously that represents the, the potential adaptability, right? And, and so um, I'll just give you for instance, so we got a guy that's a you know, six foot three, 300 pound football player. He doesn't change much, right? Because um, one, we don't want him to change all that much. And, and so, um, because it's a performance related adaptation that we kind of know is going to be somewhat restrictive on certain elements of, of, of movement. When you're talking about say the rehab mode where adaptability is the primary concern. So we're trying to get as much adaptability into the system as possible because we don't know what's wrong. We never do. And so we're trying to get as much adaptability. And so we, we do want that to be maintained for a much longer period of time, because again, that represents the adaptability until it's time for them to do whatever it is that they do that would reduce their adaptability. So if, if they go back into some training process where they're trying to recapture some element of performance, then we know that that, that, that kind of thing is gonna change. And so um, under that circumstance, we would always want the ISA to be mobile. Right, um, because again, it is that foundation. It's, it's it represents the first compensatory strategy for if we look at the two extreme archetypes. It represents the first um, uh, um, compensatory strategy. So that's what stops the ISA from moving is when the diaphragm um, has a limited excursion. And if I can't move that, then I know that the rest of the stuff isn't going to move. Um, with its full relative capabilities. Um, I figured. Um, so with regards to the performance aspect, I know we've spoken about that multiple times, and I, but I, I, so my question is, we're trying to evaluate these kind of KPIs to see if that person has pain or has some sort of movement related issue. Yep. We're trying to evaluate the whole system to see, okay, well, what do they potentially need more of or you know trying to figure out why that's happening right now as you're saying everyone has their individual kind of sweet spot and um i find it obviously i think it, the way that i see it so far is that because i've been playing with that in the past few years and it, it takes a long time to really develop that like a lot of exposure to that person personally at least to find okay, this seems to be their sweet spot. This is kind of what they need. Yeah. Have you found a particular way of doing this? Either of like saying, okay, well, how are we gonna correlate your hip range of motion with your sprinting sprint mechanics or with, in order to have an easier time figuring this out, figuring like, what are their KPIs? What's that spectrum? Mm -hmm. You know, like Dan Papp would always talk about the spectrum of like, this is where they perform well. And like outside of that, no good. So right. like, how do you go about figuring this out over time to say, mm -hmm. okay, this is what this person needs. Those are the KPIs. 
Okay. You're, you're married, right? Yes. Okay. How did you figure out that she was the one? Well, a lot of exposure. <laughs> yeah. Um, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or you go on The Bachelor, right? The Bachelor TV show. And then that's how you find the right one, right? You just weed them out. Okay. Um, no, you, you, it's exactly the way you describe it. And, and you know, everybody wants to like a, like a shortcut process. And the reality is, is that you kind of got to get to know this person. Like, how do they respond to certain elements? You know, if you're dealing with the pain issue, um, obviously you have to induce enough, enough adaptability to alleviate that first, right? And then you just start to superimpose the performance aspects back on, and then you monitor for, for the changes. You kind of know where they started, which is really, really good because again, now you have a comparator from a performance aspect and you say, you know what, if I get close enough to that presentation, chances are our performance is gonna go up, but, but that's gonna be my, my indicator that I'm probably getting too close to, you know, to where that they, they start to, to uh, create their own interference. Right. And, and but this is this is why it's hard. This is why this is why we don't have great answers, you know, uh, or predictive capability. Right. Because we just don't know. So so I think that, you know, you got to date your client a little bit, you know, and, and find out if she's the one. Right. I mean, seriously, it's a it, it, it's unfortunate. It would be really nice if we had these hard and fast rules. You know, say, oh, when you have 17 degrees of hip internal rotation, that's bad. I don't know. Is it bad? What if it makes her faster? Right? You know, but maybe, you know, 15 degrees, and now you've got interference. How are you going to know? You measure a bunch of stuff. You, you create the adaptability to alleviate the anything that is, is interference. And then you re-superimpose everything. You just bring them back, right? That, that's ultimately what the return to play process is, right? I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't think return to play is very special. Like, I don't even think we need a concept called return to play. We usually just call that training, right? It's just that where you're, where's your starting point? So if somebody's coming off of a surgery or an injury, right? They're just starting at a different place than somebody else that doesn't feel pain. But if we, if we monitor them the same way, you know, that's going to be the best, best way to figure out what is the, the um, desired outcome.